Let's bring in right now. Uh, I'm excited, Mika. I know you are. Like, I, it's kind of hard for me to hold myself yourself. together. I'm not, no, I'm not. Uh, it's hard for me to do that. Okay, but just sound like Joe. Oh, compose yourself. Good God. Oh, there she is. Am I the luckiest man in the world oh, or what? Seriously? Senator Clinton, I apologize for Joe Scarborough this morning. Well, she apologizes Good for morning. me every day. Hey, Senator, how you doing? I'm doing great, Joe. Hi, Mika. Hi. How we are had, you? We had uh, John Corzine on earlier. He knows a thing or two about Wall Street. Mm -hmm. he, he said that this two page piece of paper that everybody's supposed to vote on to bail out Wall Street uh, was broad, general, uh, and, and frightening. Uh, do, do you think we need to know more about where that $700 billion goes before the taxpayers write the check? I sure do, Joe. And uh, for me, we need to have uh, checks and balances, not just a blank check, so that the taxpayers are having some control over the purse strings and not left holding the bag again like uh, always seems to happen. So that's why we are in the Congress trying to uh, come to some agreement about the kind of accountability and oversight that needs to be in this plan. Uh, I also believe strongly, and I've advocated this throughout my campaign now for nearly two years and have come forth with very specific proposals about how we need to have authority to rewrite mortgages uh, and to deal with uh, the establishment of some uh, institution like what we had during the Great Depression, the Homeowners Loan Corporation, because this is not going to be handled you know, between now and the time that uh, the Bush administration uh, leaves office. We've got to have a, an institutional response, not just an ad hoc uh, discretionary power given to the Treasury Secretary. You know, it, it, it seems that Americans, when they look at the political parties and the solutions, have to vote uh, on, on the extremes, you have Republicans, like myself, a big deregulator. I think, let's get the government off of our backs. You have Democrats that in the past have, have wanted to get the government involved in everything. And, of course, we see with something like Sarbanes-Oxley, it's not that simple. You try to help investors, and you drive business from New York to London. How do we thread that needle hmm. on an issue like this? I think that's a really great uh uh, framing for this because you know we seem in America to go from one end of the spectrum to the other we're bouncing around like some pendulum instead of trying to stay in the center be pragmatic come up with solutions that work uh, we established back in the 1930s under incredibly uh, severe economic conditions uh, the framework for regulation that frankly made our market the envy of the world because we had regulation but we didn't uh, you know in any way constrain the marketplace so we had unprecedented growth for all of those decades well we're in a new global economy now and we haven't kept up with what is needed for a regulatory framework to try to make sure we rein in the excesses and the abuses you know one thing that uh, you know conservatives understand is that human nature being what it is uh, people are going to test the limits and mm -hmm. conservatives are very worried about giving too much power to government bureaucrats one thing that progressives understand is human nature being what it is, uh, people in the market are going to test the limits. So let's get together, recognize that we need to have frameworks that keep people from abusing either the public trust or the private trust. Because what this crisis really is at bottom is a total loss of trust. You know, people don't believe what they're being told. Americans have no reason to believe either their government or the uh, Wall Street uh, mm -hmm. banks. Uh, banks don't believe each other. They don't know how to value the assets that they either hold or that they've sold. So we need to take a deep breath here. And I think that's what Secretary Paulson was trying to do. But there has to be some checks and balances. We can't just turn over $700 billion. We need to have an ability to rewrite these mortgages. We need to begin to rein in the excesses on uh, Wall Street and in the marketplace. And we need to do it in the way that will get our economy up and moving again. Senator Clinton, voters obviously will be looking to vote for someone who can take the reins and lead this country into better days. Um, my question to you is, do you think Sarah Palin can handle a crisis like this? Well, I think voters look at the top of the ticket, Mika. They look at, uh, you know, the two men, uh, Senator Obama and Senator McCain, because uh, that's where policy is set. Uh, and I don't think that uh, most people believe that the Republican ticket will radically change direction from what we've seen the last eight years, which hasn't worked. You know, there obviously is responsibility to be spread around from all 
sources about why we're in the mess we're in. But certainly the regulatory authorities that existed were just not up to the job. And the need for regulatory reform was just not a priority of the Bush administration. So I really believe that most voters are going to have to ask themselves, who is best prepared to deal with what we're going to inherit? The next president's going to have a real mess on his hands. And, you know, that comes down to the two nominees for president. And obviously, I think that Senator Obama is not only better prepared, but will have the support and the advice of people who understand what we're going to have to do to get through this. You could have really helped the uh, Democratic ticket for sure. Do you ever wish you were on it? Your husband said you didn't want the job. <laughs> well, it's not uh, anyone's to want or not want. It's up to the uh, nominee. And I think uh, Senator Obama made a great choice with Joe Biden. He's a champion of working people. He understands the complex world that we're operating in. Uh, he'll be a terrific partner in the White House. Yeah, you know, she's, she's being gracious. We love Joe. Everybody <laughs> around here loves Joe. But John Ridley, it was a terrible mistake on their part not to pick <laughs> Senator Hillary Clinton. I, I take the Senator and the President at their word. But I do have a question. In going uh, with about 40-some days to the election, there's still something like 42% of your former supporters who have not gotten behind Barack Obama yet, despite the efforts of you and your husband. Can, do you think that you can close that gap, and why are they not moving to uh, Obama at this point, considering all that's going on, particularly with the economy, where the Democrats seem to have the edge? Well, I'm working hard to close that gap and to try to make the case that I believe in strongly that uh, uh, Barack and Joe are the people who are going to be best for America. Um, I think that lots of people are trying to make up their minds. You know, that's not surprising. Uh, this is a very uh, monumental election. There's a lot at stake. Uh, but I've been traveling from Florida to Ohio to Nevada to New Mexico, from New Hampshire to California, basically saying that anybody who supported me uh, should be supporting uh, Barack Obama. Uh, you have much more in common with uh, the kind of positions that need to be taken, uh, that I advocated, that Senator Obama advocates. And as we get into these debates starting Friday, when people will be able to compare and contrast the positions between the candidates, I think you'll see that gap not only close, but I'm confident that uh, we're going to win in November because uh, I ask people, you know, to talk about the election, but not in the traditional way of asking, you know, who are you for, but instead asking who's for you. And there isn't any doubt that the Democrats would be better for everyday Americans getting up, worrying about their home value or their job or every other problem that they are facing in their daily lives. Yeah. Ridley, it's still a hard sell. I yeah. mean, that's like somebody going to a store to buy an Aretha Franklin album and then the, the, the cashier trying to push Miley Cyrus on him. It just okay. doesn't work. Okay. I, I want Aretha. If you want music right? and the music is good, I with the company want put out that Aretha. Music. Senator Hillary right. Clinton. <laughs> Senator, thank you. It's great to see you again. Thank you. It's great to talk to you all.